Hi everyone and welcome to Tech Cravers. No matter what you play in your PS Vita, whether it's action games, sports games or first person shooters, I'm willing to bet that you've felt the same way I have, the need for more power. While the PS Vita is an incredible device and even as it approaches its 15th anniversary it can still run some amazing titles. But let's face it, times have changed. What was acceptable performance when the PS Vita launched just doesn't cut it today. That's why in this video I'm going to show you how to overclock your PS Vita for that extra boost in performance. This will help your PS Vita to maintain a stable 30 or 60 FPS in games that support it and it can even speed up sluggish cutscenes and real time rendered cinematics. So are you ready to bring your PS Vita into the 2020s? Let's jump into it. Alright, first things first. In this video I'm gonna show you how to overclock your PS Vita in just a few minutes using a very simple tool. However, there's something you need to know before we start. To overclock your PS Vita it must be jailbroken, or hacked in other words. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that overclocking is the single biggest reason to jailbreak your PS Vita in 2025. And the best part? I have several easy to follow guides in my other videos that show you exactly how to do it. So if you haven't jailbroken your PS Vita yet, pause this video, check out one of the guides and come back to this video once you're ready. Alright, with the jailbroken PS Vita in our hands, the next thing we need to do is install an app called Auto Plugin 2. In my recent PS Vita modification video where I show you how to swap the functions of the cross and circle buttons, I go over the simple steps on how to install Auto Plugin 2. So let me just cut in that part here. If you already have Auto Plugin 2 installed on your device, feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter in the timeline. Now that we are taking care of the button swap, let's move on to the easiest way to install a variety of plugins to customize and enhance your PS Vita experience. We'll do this by installing Auto Plugin 2. First, open the browser on your PS Vita and make sure you're connected to the internet. Go to http colon slash slash download dot myhb dot dev and press enter. I'll also include the link in the video description. This will take you to the Vita app downloader page. Click continue, then OK to open the Vita downloader menu. Once there, scroll down one step and select install quick app downloader. After it finished downloading and installing, click exit to return to your PS Vita home menu, scroll down to locate the quick app downloader and open it. In the quick app downloader you'll see a list of apps in either green or white. The, the green ones are already installed on your device, while the white ones are available for install. For example you might see Button Swapper XO which is another way to switch out the X and Circle buttons, but we don't need that here. Instead select Auto Plugin 2 to download and install it. This might take a moment but once it's done you can back out to your PS Vita's home menu and you'll see that Auto Plugin 2 is now installed on your device. Welcome back time travelers! Now that you have Auto Plugin 2 installed on your jailbroken PS Vita, it's time to launch it. Occasionally, when you open the app, it might prompt you for a software update. You always want the latest version, so go ahead and install the update, and once that is done, reopen Auto Plugin 2 if it doesn't do so automatically. Remember that you need a Wi Fi connection before you do this. Once updated and reopened, this is what you'll see. And before we continue, we need to remove any old profiles for PS V Shell. To do this, select Vita Plugins and press X. On the next page, use the D-pad to scroll down to Uninstall Plugins and press X to enter. Here you'll see a list of your currently installed plugins. Scroll down to the one named psvshell.skprx and press X. You'll be prompted to confirm if you really want to remove it. Press X again to confirm. After that, press Circle until you return to the main page. Then select Exit. This will restart your PS Vita, which is a mandatory step, so let it complete the process. Once restarted, 
open up Vita Shell or Vita Deploy. I'm going with Vita Deploy. And from Vita Deploy, select File Manager at the top, and this will actually take us into Vita Shell. From here, use the D-pad to scroll down to the UR0 folder and press X to enter. Next, scroll down to the Data folder and press X to enter. Then, use the D-pad to locate the PSV shell folder and press X to enter that folder as well. Finally, navigate to the Profiles folder and press X to open it. Chances are that your folder, like mine, is empty, but if you see any saved profiles, in other words, any files in this folder, press the triangle button on your PS Vita to bring up the menu. From there, select the option to delete the files. If your folder is already empty, you can back out of Vita Shell by pressing the PS button on your device, then go ahead and open Auto Plugin 2 again. Now click on Vita Plugins and this time select Install Plugins instead. Scroll down until you find a plugin named PSV Shell by Graphene CT and press X to start the installation. You'll see a prompt reminding you to clean your PS Vita of any old profiles before proceeding. Since we're already taking care of that in the previous step, go ahead and press X to continue. And then press X again to finish installing the plugin. Once the installation is complete, back out using Circle until you return to the main menu. From there, select Exit to restart your PS Vita once again. Now you have everything you need to overclock your PS Vita. If you hold down the PS button, whether you're on the home screen or in a game, you'll see this familiar menu. But here's the difference. If you scroll down, you'll now find settings to adjust the clock speed for both your CPU and GPU. These settings will directly impact your FPS while playing. To overclock your CPU, check the box to the right, then increase the value to your preferred level. After that, do the same to your GPU. Keep in mind that different games require different levels of overclocking to achieve optimal FPS. Some games are simply more demanding than others. Remember that tweaking your PS Vita's CPU and GPU clock speeds can negatively affect your battery life and could potentially cause your device to overheat. So proceed with caution and do this at your own risk. The values for crossbar refer to settings used with your Adrenaline PSP emulator. The more content you add to your cross media bar for PSP emulation, the slower it can become. By increasing the values for crossbar you can significantly improve the responsiveness when navigating through the menus. A bit further down you'll also find options to configure a handy stat overlay that displays your current FPS and more. You can customize these settings to your liking, but for this tutorial I'll be using the mini design. This will allow us to clearly see the FPS difference when we test games in just a moment. And remember, you can access this menu from anywhere or from any game simply by holding down the PS button. So if you're not satisfied with a setting, you can adjust it at any time. But now it's time for some real-world testing. In Killzone Mercenaries, the PS Vita really struggles to maintain the advertised locked 30fps that the game is supposed to run at. With the stats overlay enabled, we can clearly see that the game frequently dips below 30fps, sometimes dropping as low as 20fps. 15 years ago, especially on a handheld like this, this was something we fully accepted, something we might even have been impressed by. But today, it's just not as enjoyable anymore. So if we play through the same section again, but this time with both the CPU and GPU overclocked to their maximum settings, we can immediately notice a significant difference. The gameplay feels much smoother and far more enjoyable. For example, this part of the game dropped to around 25 FPS without overclocking, if I remember right. Keep in mind the difference is even more noticeable in person than it might appear over a video on YouTube. Even bigger differences can be seen in poorly optimized games, like FIFA 15. This game isn't locked at 30fps, but is supposedly capable of running at 60fps, something that feels almost absurd when you consider the actual performance. During matches you get around 40fps, and in some cutscenes it can drop to as low as 15fps. FIFA is definitely one of those games that feels sluggish, like trying to play through Syrup on the PS Vita. 
But with our new magic trick something amazing happens, we unlock the PS Vita's full potential and can finally enjoy matches running at, if not completely locked 60fps, then very close to it. The difference is night and day and it transforms the gameplay experience entirely. I can't help but imagine that this is how the developers intended FIFA to be enjoyed on the PS Vita when they created the game 10 years ago. Last up in my tests is God of War 2, a true classic and one of the most celebrated action-adventure games of all time. Unfortunately, playing it natively on the PS Vita today feels far from ideal. Without any tweaks or modifications, the game struggled to perform smoothly with sluggish frame rates and noticeable lack of responsiveness. This is particularly disappointing given the legendary status of the game, which was originally designed to showcase thrilling, fast-paced combat and epic cinematic moments. That's why it's an incredible feeling when, through overclocking, we can achieve locked 30fps and finally play the game the way it was meant to be played. I can't stress enough how much better the gaming experience becomes with overclocking. This is absolutely something everyone needs to try, so if you haven't done it yet, it's time to hack your old PS Vita using one of my guides and overclock it with the help of this video. I promise it's worth your time and effort. That's it for my overclocking tutorial for the PS Vita. If it wasn't already obvious, this is absolutely something you should try if you're a PS Vita enthusiast. It breathes new life into your old games, bringing them into the 2020s and letting you relive some of the best titles out there in a fresh, improved way. If this video helped you out or if you simply enjoyed it, feel free to show your support by leaving a thumbs up and dropping a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to Tech Cravers for more videos like this in the future. Until next time, take care and happy gaming!